Good morning, beloveds. My name is Diane Stewart Hamlin, and I am the practitioner that is walking with you through meditation this morning. I want to invite you to settle into the space that you are in, to, uh, we're going to take some deep breaths, and I'm going to invite you to listen to the reading that I am bringing forth today. <clears throat> This reading comes from Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. And it begins on page 65. And it begins with these words. And as I read them, I invite you to just close your eyes Settle into your seat and space where you are. Turn your palms upright in this manner. Let me demonstrate in this way. Thumb to forefinger and upright in a receptive manner so that you can receive the energy that not only comes from these words that were written with so much love, but also that comes to you through the divine experience of your personal meditation. And so we breathe, deeply taking a deep breath, exhale. And we take one more deep breath. We exhale. Be still and know. If you choose to believe in a God who somehow needs a something and has such hurt feelings, if he doesn't get it, that he punishes those from who he expected to receive it, then you choose to believe in a God much smaller than I. You truly are children of a lesser God. No, my children, please let me assure you again through this writing that I am without needs. I require nothing. This does not mean I am not without desires. Desires and needs are not the same thing, although many of you have made them so in your present lifetime. Desire is the beginning of all creation. Hmm. It is first thought. It is a grand feeling within the soul. It is God choosing what next to create. And what is God's desire? I desire first to know and experience myself in all my glory, to know who I am before I invented you and all the worlds of the universe. It was impossible for me to do so. Second, I desire that you shall know and experience who you really are through the power I have given you to create and experience yourself in whatever way you choose. Third, I desire for the whole life process to be an experience of constant joy, continuous creation, never ending expansion and total fulfillment in each moment of now. I have established a perfect system whereby these desires may be realized. They are being realized now in every moment. The only difference between you and me is that I know this. In the moment of your total knowing, which moment could come upon you anytime, you too will feel, as I always, totally joyful, loving, accepting, blessing, and grateful. 
these are the five attitudes of God. And before we are through with this dialogue, I will show you how the application of these attitudes in your life now can and will bring you to godliness. All of this is a very long answer to a very short question. Yes, hold your values so long as you experience that they serve you. Yet, look to see whether the values you serve with your thoughts, words, and actions bring to the space of your experience the highest and best idea you ever had about you. Examine your values one by one. Hold them up to the light of public scrutiny. If you can tell the world you are who you are and what you believe without breaking stride or hesitating, you are happy with yourself. There is no reason to continue much further in this dialogue with me because you've created a self and the life for the self, which needs no improvement. You have reached perfection. So as we allow ourselves to experience the perfection through which we view our lives and experience our lives, we breathe deeply and we sit with the knowing that right where we are, there is perfection because God is and we are and we are created from its very essence. Hmm.
home. You have created the self and a life for the self, which needs no improvement. We breathe deeply and surrender to the silence as we hear our own perfection already exists. Just a few more moments. Hmm. So how grateful I am mm. to be able to invite you to turn your attention to the space and energy that we've created together. 
how grateful I am to breathe into this space. Energetically and knowing fully that there is no need for improvement because all is already well and good. So I bless this time together. I bless the energy that has developed as a result of us shifting our attention. I bless the service that is to come forth. I bless Reverend Raymond, and I bless all who have come together to make this so, especially our beloved Tracy, who always keeps it going and flowing together for us. So I'm giving thanks for this time together, this beloved community and the hmm, truth that reveals itself through the silence. How grateful I am to know that right where each and every person is in this gathering, whether right now or later on the recorded version of this service, right there God is. And each one of us comes to shine our light and to be blessed by the teachings that comes through our beloved minister. And each one of us carries a light so bright and allows the rest of the world to see. For this, I'm grateful and thankful. And I simply release my words into the loving activity of the law itself, knowing that all is good and all is well. And so it is. Amen. Hmm. Namaste. feeling so incomplete caught up in the cloud of self-defeat just going through the motions again wondering when my ship was coming in and so the voice said what's bringing you down you convince yourself there's no way out are you looking for someone to blame blind to the part you play in this game say you want a better life you better believe it. Good fortune on your side. You better believe it. A love that fills you up inside makes you feel alive. If you want to change, start with your mind. You better believe it. What you see is what you get But that's a lie that helped me to forget My life designed by no one else So now it's time I told myself Say you want a better life You better believe it Good fortune on your side You better believe it A love that fills you up inside Makes you feel alive. If you want to change, start with your mind. You better believe it. Don't want to cry about it, lie about it, tell a story about it, make excuses about it. Now, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? You say you want a better life. You better believe it. Good fortune on your side. You say you want a better life. You better believe it. Good fortune on your side. You better believe it. A love that feels you up. 
you feel alive. If you want to change, start with your mind. If you want to change, start with your mind. If you want to change, start with your mind. Oh, you better believe it. You better believe it. You better believe it. You better believe it. Good morning and happy Sunday. Ooh. That's Halloween Sunday. Ooh. Good morning. Look, who's doing this? Thank you. Now, as we were, in order to help with our method of recording service, we request that congregants and participants who are not speaking, performing, or interpreting to please turn cameras off until after service. At that time, all can come on camera to fellowship and share the love. Thank you for your cooperation. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Greater Baltimore's virtual service. I am Tracy Rhymes, your host. Senior Minister, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson is our speaker. Our musician is Deletta Gillespie. Serving as today's practitioner who led the pre-service meditation is Diane Stewart Hamlin. Assisting with making this service open, inviting, and accessible to the deaf community are our sign language interpreters, Ashley Goldman and Faith Moore. On behalf of Reverend Dr. Ray, Thank you for service. Thank you for your service. <laughs> At CSLGB, every Sunday is an invite a friend or family member Sunday. Make sure you spread the love and invite someone to service. We would love to have them hang out with us. Indeed, indeed. Before Diane Stewart Hamlin grounds us in prayer, let me share this. Diane is a spiritual counselor, public speaker, and transformational coach, a licensed religious science practitioner, and an agape licensed spiritual practitioner. She is a facilitator at the Agape University and a ministerial student at Michael B. Beckwith School of Ministry. Her clients seek her out for help with a variety of challenges, including relationship issues, couples counseling, career changes, desires for financial increase, spiritual challenges, grief and loss, dealing with a divorce and parenting support. She is a licensed attorney with a practice that is focused on alternative and creative legal solutions. You can follow her on Instagram and Twitter at Stuham and on Facebook. You can schedule an appointment at dstuham at gmail.com. What a magnificent time to be here. Hmm. So thank you, Tracy. How grateful I am to speak this word about this service this morning first 
to ground myself in gratitude and thanksgiving for the awareness that God really is all that there is, that everything has its emanation from the very essence and source of God itself, that all things are created out of this universal principle that we call God, Allah, Buddha, Yeshua, and so many, many other names that we know absolutely that this power, this presence is the source of our very lives. That every word that is spoken by our minister, Reverend Raymond, is a word spoken from the very source of life itself, that Reverend Raymond was shot from the presence of God itself. It stands in this awareness in this truth, in this knowing. And so every word spoken today is the word of God and it comes freely and effortlessly from our minister and it falls on fertile ears that are listening to the word spoken as it becomes flesh and becomes the very expression of our lives. So we are giving thanks because this service is the best service that has ever happened at CSL Greater Baltimore. And every single person that is participating in the unfolding of this service is participating from the very essence of God itself. So everyone who is here today is blessed, nurtured, held, in the very palm of the most high. And everyone here carries these words and this message out into the universe. And we all together create a world that works for everyone. So it is from this place that I give thanks and I release my word into the loving activity of the law itself, knowing it is already done and done already. And I simply give thanks, blessing this time together, I say, and so it is. Amen. And so it is. Thank you, Diane. The Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Baltimore's community, honors the world's religions. One tree, many branches. One mountain, many paths. One world, many religions and spiritual traditions. With the lighting of these candles on the first Sunday of each month, we not only honor each person on their select path, but we also bless them and recognize the light the love and the life affirming nature of spirit as it shows itself in each path, in each practice and in each person. This is National Hispanic Heritage Month. The United States recognizing the contributions and influences of Hispanic Americans to the history, culture, and achievements of the United States, September 15th to October 15th. September 15th was chosen as the starting point for the commemoration because it is the anniversary of independence of five Hispanic countries, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua, who all declared independence in 1821. And this is according to Wikipedia. Today, we recognize Sonia Soto Moyo, who became a U.S. District Court judge in 1992 and was elevated 
to the U.S. Second Circuit Court of Appeals in 1998. In 2009, she was confirmed as the first Latina Supreme Court Justice in the U.S. history. Her first learnings toward the justice system became after watching an episode of Perry Mason, one of my shows, favorite shows, when a prosecutor on the program said he did not mind losing when a defendant turned out to be innocent. She later said to the New York Times that she made the quantum leap if that was the prosecutor's job, then the guy who made the decision to dismiss the case was the judge. That was what I was going to be. When her husband died in 1963, she worked hard to raise her children as a single parent. She placed what she would later call an almost fanatical emphasis on a higher education. Sotomayor graduated from Cardinal Spellman High School in the Bronx in 1972 and entered the Ivy League attending Princeton University. After she received low marks on her first midterm paper, she sought help taking more English and writing classes. She became highly involved with the Puerto Rican groups on campus. And she also worked with the university's discipline committee where she started developing her legal skills. All of her hard work paid off when she graduated summa cum laude from Princeton in 76. She was awarded the Pine Prize, which is the highest academic award given to Princeton undergraduates. That same year, she entered Yale Law School. She received her JD in 79, passed the bar in 80, and immediately began work as an assistant district attorney in Manhattan. And she was responsible for prosecuting robbery, assault, murder, police brutality, and child pornography cases. To learn more, visit biography.com slash law dash figure slash Sonia Sotomayo. Time for announcements. We currently have three weekly ongoing ways to study, learn, and discuss. On the first and third Monday nights, the Sacred Contracts Book Club, hosted by Nancy Rosenberg. On Wednesday nights, the Science of Mind textbook exploration group facilitated by Reverend Dr. Ray. And the Thursday night study group facilitated by practitioner, Dr. Ronnie Ellington. Sign up for the CSLGB newsletter, the CSLGB Facebook and Instagram pages, and get more news and information by visiting cslgreaterbaltimore.org or .com. If this fundraising vision inspi inspires you and you are interested in serving on the fundraising committee in any way possible, contact the chair, Rainika Permetla, and come together to strategize the most effective ways to manifest funding. To get more information, meeting dates and time, 
and join the committee, send an email to reynikapermetla at gmail.com. Here at CSLGB, where every Sunday is an invite a friend or family member Sunday, did you know it is also become a member Sunday? Mm, that's right. Every Sunday is a great day to choose this as your spiritual community, your spiritual family, and hang out with Tracy. Okay, never mind. The first step is to take the discovery class, which is offered online and can be taken at any time. For more information on how to become a member or what comes after the discovery class, visit the website or send an email to info at cslgreaterbaltimore.org or visit the website for more information on becoming a member of CSLGB. Welcome home. The CSLGB Ministry of Education has upcoming classes. Foundations of Science of Mind facilitated by practitioner Dr. Ronnie Ellington. This will be starting soon. Dates are pending. If you are interested in taking foundations, contact Sue Monahan. <clears throat> Excuse me. Practical mysticism, an exploration of mysticism, what it is and what it is not, provides the framework to live a more mystical life in the present time. This is a 10 week class, runs September 22nd through November 24th, 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The facilitator is practitioner Eugene Holden. Prerequisite is Foundations of Science of Mind and the investment is $270. To enroll, contact Sue Monahan. For the full class descriptions and more information, you are encouraged to visit the website, cslgreaterbaltimore.org or .com to find more educational opportunities in ours and other communities we are partnered with. If you would like to receive a daily text and voicemail from Reverend Dr. Ray, type J-O-I-N-2-833-663-2444. To begin receiving your daily inspirations, you will be glad you did. All right, on the count of three, we shout, Prayer works. Are you ready? One, two, three. Prayer works. Ooh, that was loud. Yes. We, as a community, continue to treat and move our feet, knowing the truth for everyone around the planet. Prayer requests can be sent at any time via email to info at cslgreaterbaltimore.org. Our musician, Deletta Gillespie, is a multidisciplinary teaching and performing artist, playwright, singer, songwriter, and recording artists. Her stage debut came in her mother's nightclub at nightclub act at 
age six. And she's been on and around the stage ever since. Her roles back and off stage include writer, director, stage manager, and production assistant. While earning an MFA at in theater arts at Towson University, Deletta discovered a passion for creating performance and programs that inspire and evoke courageous conversations on challenging issues. There is so much more Deletta is doing. Check out her website at DeLettaGillespie.com. I give you Deletta. Good morning, everyone. I am always grateful to be a part of Sunday services with CSL Greater Baltimore. And so I'm happy to share the next song with you. And the title is called I Am Possibility. I hope you enjoy it. Yes, I am, infinite possibilities. Thank you, Diletta. Now, Diane will lead us in a spiritual practice. Hmm. This morning's 
Greetings, everyone. This morning's a spiritual practice is taken from This Thing Called You, written by Ernest Holmes. And it is begins at the bottom of page 51 with just the word the, and it goes through to the end of the chapter. This spiritual practice is called listening. I invite you to breathe and listen to the words as they are read to you through me. The law of mind reflects your mental attitudes exactly as they are. Say, that which I seek is seeking me. That which belongs to me will come to me. Since it is my desire that only God, truth, love, wisdom, and power shall go from me, I know this is all that I that can come back to me. The kingdom of God is within and around me. I know that the power of the living spirit exists at the center of my being. Now think of some desire and say, it is done unto me. Even God must wait your conscious cooperation before the full light of his presence and the power of his law can be made manifest through you. Your conscious cooperation with him starts with a realization of the divine presence and your union with it. Say, I know that the presence, the power, and activity of the living spirits are in and around me. I know that the law of God, which is perfect, is operating through me. I know that there is one mind, that mind is God, and that mind is my mind. There is no fear in this mind, no memory of fear, no expectation of fear. There is no thought of want or lack or limitation in this mind. This mind is functioning in me now. Now make known your desires and accept them as manifest manifest facts in your life. Every organ, function, action, and reaction of your physical being, circulation, assimilation, and elimination are parts of a divine pattern which is forever perfect within you. Say, there is no obstruction to the operation of this pattern. There is no irritation, agitation, or inflammation. There is no sense of unhappiness or morbidity. There is no confusion in spirit. Therefore, there is no confusion in my mind. There is one divine circulation flowing through me, which is never inhibited, retarded, or congested. The circulation is free, complete, and perfect, automatically eliminating everything that does not belong to pure spirit. When you think with complete conviction, the law of mind will operate on your thought exactly as you think it for the thing, condition, or person you are thinking about. The repeated experience of thousands during the last 50 years have proved this. The principle you are using has been scientifically demonstrated. It is now merely a question of how effective you use it. Let me say that again. It is now merely a question of how effectively you use it. Say to yourself, the mind within me, being God, 
is not afraid of anything. It does not remember any unhappy experience, nor does it anticipate any. At the center of my being, there is complete poise, perfect faith and confidence. I am forever one with spirit, in it and of it. I am individualization of pure spirit. There is no condemnation, no judgment, no sense of sin, sinner, mistake, punishment, burden, doubt, or fear in me. Mm. No bitterness, no hate, no strife. Mm. And as we allow these words just to fall upon fertile ears, and a spirit so wide open, we expand even more to receive the message from Reverend Raymond. We give ourselves the opportunity to remember that there is no condemnation, no judgment, no sense of sin, sinner, mistake, punishment, burden, doubt, or fear within each of us. No bitterness, no hate, no strife. We move forward as a beloved community, spreading only love and light. Breathing deeply, we allow ourselves to experience the words from the Most High. And so it is. Amen. Ashe. Shalom. Hotep. Peace and richest blessings. Namaste. Thank you, Diane. All right. Senior Minister, Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Baltimore, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson has frequently been referred to as a Renaissance man. One look at his resume and the reason becomes clear. His mission is to live, move, and be an active, which is an acronym, authentic, compassionate, transparent, inspired, vibrant, and empowered member of society who serves to educate, elucidate, emancipate, awaken, and empower people and communities. I give you Reverend Dr. Ray. That's good, sis. Thank you very much, Tracy. Good morning, everybody. So let's jump on in. How many of us have ever had a, a struggling time in life, that, that moment when, you know, the road is rocky when there's stuff going on, stuff hit the fan, just want to stay in bed. Today, we're talking about that very thing, when life seems to be challenging, when the road gets rocky. When we push past our comfort zone, we are very often faced with challenges to our old ways of being. Habits can be challenging to change. Our experiences of life can feel uncertain, difficult, downright traumatic, and our footing somewhat unstable. It is at these times that we are called to ask, what are the universal truths that we can anchor onto, lean into, and deepen our understanding and practice of that which will help us find our stability and offer us new ways to move through whatever this situation is as part of our evolutionary journey. So let's pause and breathe because this whole idea of comfort zones is an area where we tend to reside and rest a lot. 
Why? Because it's comfortable, right? Now, it's important to recognize there is a difference between being comfortable and existing in the comfort zone. The comfort zone is a place where we are encouraged to push, always push beyond the comfort zone. Being comfortable is fine. And we can learn how to be comfortable in the practice of pushing beyond the comfort zone. But we have to be very clear on, well, what's the difference? And what is the whole, like what comfort zone, what does that even mean? How do I even recognize that? Well, self-awareness. Where do you as an individual, where do you tend to exist and live and move and have your beingness? Is it that place where I have to have absolute control over every aspect of my life? So I make sure every I is dotted, every T is crossed, every comma is where it needs to be. I make sure that every bottle of water is turned facing forward so the labels face outward. I make sure that every can of beans in the cupboard is facing. Like I got to make sure that everything, Tracy giving me evil out right now. I make sure that everything is absolutely perfect. Keep my tennis shoes clean. Keep everything dry cleaned and ironed. It's got to be crisp and sharp because I have to control everything. I, I, I don't have the confidence. I, I'm afraid of, you know, if I take that class, well, what if I fail? If I stand up and give a speech, what if I fail? What if they don't like me? What if I don't get enough likes on Facebook? What if I, what if I don't do TikTok right? What, what if I say the wrong thing? Right, so we're moving, comfort, fear, then we get to the place where we're now learning. We're willing to learn. We're willing to expand. I'm learning more of what Diane is talking about. I'm learning more of what it means to be the very power and presence of the infinite I am. There is only one mind. That mind is God. Therefore, everything about that mind must be true of my mind because there is only one mind. So if the infinite is wisdom, the essence of, the, the absoluteness of wisdom, then I must have the personification of that wisdom. So learning zone, I am acquiring new skills. I am extending and expanding beyond the confines of what I thought I was to become something greater in my understanding. Then there's growth. I find my purpose. I live my purpose. I have a vision, et cetera. I have goals moving me forward in a life-affirming manner. Where do you tend to live, move, and have your being? Because if it is in the comfort zone predominantly, then the invitation is to push beyond that. Because if we don't, then we stay stuck. Eckhart Tolle said, at the level of being, notice the capital B, at the level of being, one recognizes that all suffering is illusory. Breathe. Suffering is due solely to identification with form. Pause and breathe. Yes. And now at the level of the infinite, yes, suffering does not exist. However, when we become at the level of the relative, at the level of this personification, suffering does exist. Humans do suffer. And it's not strictly because we identify with form per se, because that's why we're here. We're here in form to experience form. Yeah, that. Because oftentimes we are, well, you know, what, what, what did he say? Like the, the absolute being, then one recognizes that it's an illusion. Yeah, at the absolute, it's an illusion. Pause. You, you do realize that what we are made up of is atoms, molecules, electrons, protons, and neutrons. But when you look at me, and I look at you, and I look at Tracy, I don't see electrons, protons, and neutrons. I see a face. I see a body. I see a ceiling. But that's an illusion, because that's not really what that is. So it's a matter of energy that become okay so at the level of being yes it is an illusion because that's not at that level however suffering is due solely to the identification with form mm. my my remix 
At the level of being fully human and fully divine, one recognizes all suffering is to be recognized, to be acknowledged, and to be addressed. In other words, healed appropriately. Suffering is caused due to an error in understanding and practice of the creative principle. See, if we bypass it and push it away like, it's all an illusion. It is what it is. Don't identify with your form. Don't I, okay, it's easy to say don't identify with your form, but while your wisdom too is pushing up through and there's great pain, but it's an illusion. At the level of being, don't identify. Really? Really? Is that, is that what we do now? No. So we understand what am I being invited to recognize in this process so that it can be shifted and transformed ultimately so that I can bring truth to it and heal it. So the question isn't about really the rocky road, the, the, the trials in life. It's about our perception of and how we approach it and address it. Glennon Doyle said, feel all your feelings is hard. Feeling all your feelings is hard, but that's what they're for. Feelings are for feeling, all of them, even the difficult, challenging, painful ones. Feel them all. It's not about the road. It's not about the rocks. It's not about the boulders. Stephen Covey says, to change ourselves effectively, we first have to change what our perceptions. See, it's easy to look and say, oh, they're rocks. Oh, but it's a road. Nonetheless, the rocky road is moving someone to a particular location. And there are people who purposefully hike on rocky, uneven, uncomfortable roads. So perception is key. Nietzsche said, all things are subject to interpretation. Whichever interpretation prevails at a given time is a function of power and not truth. But what are we doing in this teaching? We are elevating. So truth, lowercase t, we are recognizing the ultimate truth. That which God is, I am, I am, as the letter said, I am infinite possibilities. Personifying. That is a capital T truth. Now, how do I let that be what prevails and shifts and changes the terrain of my life so that it's not just about a rocky road. It's not just about the cobblestones. It's about living, moving, and having my being in a way that I am able to transcend and traverse whatever the situation is. Robin Sharma says, everything is created twice, first in the mind and then in reality. Now we understand that there is only one life. There is only one mind. And we could argue that, well, technically, everything is only created once. Once it is in the mind of God, once it is absolutely in the mind and is, then it already exists. Capital R reality, lowercase r reality, there's only one ultimate reality. What are we doing? We pray. We know it in the mind. We know it in our spirit. We know it in our soul. We know it. And now we live, move, and have our beingness in a way that we now experience it. Everything is created twice. What is it that we are creating when we are moving through our lives and identifying situations as challenging, hard, suffering, et cetera? Are we doing that because it's comfortable to label them and identify them that way? Or are we doing it in a manner that is giving us the ability to transcend it, to heal it? Steve Maraboli said, your agreement with reality defines your life. Your agreement, your agreement with reality defines your life. What are you agreeing about your life? Are you agreeing that life should be easy? Are you agreeing that your life is difficult? Are you agreeing that poverty is a thing? Are you agreeing that evil is something that exists? As a, as a power in and of itself. Are you agree, what are you agreeing about your life? See, it's easy to want simply a few steps to get from point A to point B. 
You know, that's why we love books that say the three steps to successful living, the seven keys to financial wealth and prosperity. We love those. But if somebody came out and said the 4,621 steps for greater health and well-being, that book would never leave the shelf. You're like, I ain't reading it. I'm not, I don't, look, I can, he said 4,000 something. This one says three. Three is easier than 4,000. But what if the three is a gimmick and the 4,000 are actually going to get you from point A to point B? Are you willing to traverse more steps? Are you willing to pray more often during the day? Are you willing to meditate for one minute longer than? See, it really doesn't matter how many steps. That's a perception. If we know that the amount of steps is going to get us where we want to go, are we willing to push past the comfort zone? See, those middle steps, my legs won't get tired. The other steps, eh, still probably won't get tired. That third set of steps that go to, I have no idea where them things go. I don't even know why somebody would put steps somewhere like that. You couldn't have, dude, you couldn't have built it at the bottom of the steps. What's up there? What's up there? What's up there? But if you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that those steps, that amount of meditation, that amount of prayer, that amount of practicing the practice will achieve what you desire, would you be willing to step out of your comfort zone and traverse all 10,000 of those steps? Comfort zone says no. Ego says no. I'm very cool with where I am. I don't want to change. It's easier to stay where I am. I hear you. I hear you. Trust and believe. I understand. But there is also the idea of how do we determine the idea of what do I desire? The idea of am I willing to do the work to be in alignment with what I say I want with what I'm experiencing, with the infinite possibilities of what I know are possible. See, the idea, the rocky road isn't the issue, right? Because rocky road means a variety of things. Rocky road is an ice cream as well, and it's pretty good too. Rocky road is a popcorn. Tracy's shaking her head like, no, just, just no. Simply saying a rocky road, simply saying a difficult situation, simply saying a challenge doesn't make it a set standard for everyone throughout time. Tracy asked me to do 10 push-ups, and I'm like, I can't. Tracy asked somebody else to do 100 and they're like, cool, and they push them out. For me, 10 is challenging. For them, a hundred might be challenging. Whatever is going on in our lives, it's relative to the manner in which we address it, right? Tracy and I just watched a documentary called Heal. And in the documentary, there was a woman who was experiencing stage four cancer in various places in her body. And so she goes to a variety of healing modalities and experts and one woman is helping her initially to get comfortable with the idea of death because the fear of death is actually holding her back. And so she goes through and she walks through this thing and she has uh, a chemotherapy pack on her thing and it's going through her chest port. And she says, you know, I'm going to change my perception. I'm going to recognize this as medicine, not poison medicine. And that this chemo pack is actually here to assist me. It is chemo sabe right? It is there to assist me. It is a friend. And when she shifts her perception, things in her body, the environment shifts and changes. So the question isn't so much what is going on in our lives, but how do we approach it? How are we the very thing that's holding us down? How are we the one who's tug of warring with our own selves? How are we the one who is allowing shadow the ego to hold us back when we're the, the, the pause. And how many of us know the story of the elephant as a baby tied with chain to the post and the elephant is like, eh, I can't pull, eh, I can't pull, eh, I can't pull. And then as it grows, they just swap it out and they're like, we're going to use the chain for something else. We use a rope now. And the rope 
the elephants had you know, conditioned. It's like, look, I've tried to pull this thing for the last four years and I ain't got nowhere. I ain't pulling it no more. But it's a rope. Like you could easily snap it. Quit talking all that craziness to me. I can't move. I'm trapped. I'm stuck. How many of us do that very thing in our lives? We allow some condition, some external thing in our interpretation of it to block us. And then we start activating a variety of habits to reinforce it. Holmes says in the Science of Mind textbook, if we are wise, we will cultivate faith in these realities. This is not a difficult task, but an exciting experience. Whatever is going on is not difficult. Meditating for five minutes is not difficult. Meditating for an hour is not difficult. Meditating for five hours is not difficult. Now, I know I can see some of y'all already. Y'all like five hours. It's five hours. But that's a perception that it's difficult. I can't sit still for it. Are you sure? If someone said, I will give you $10 million, $100 million, I, can, I will guarantee you health and well-being at the end of the 10-hour meditation. Would you not work to build up the stamina to be able to do it? Would you not enforce the kind of habits that would then nurture and support that? Or would you just say, yeah, it's impossible. I can't do it. I, I just, I'm, it's not possible for me. So those infinite possibilities that Deletta spoke about, yeah, that's just a song. I exist in the realm of limited possibilities. So let's pause and think about, well, what habits do you have in your life and what are they doing? Oh, my bad. Wrong habits. Breathe. Just breathe. Tracy giving me the look. <sighs> so as I was saying, what habits do you have in your life? What are those habits doing in your life, in your existence? Michael Phelps, swimmer, the smoke weed, that dude, said, I'm kind of a creature of habit. Once I get used to doing things, it's like second nature. Creatures of habit. We refer to ourselves as creatures of habit, but how many of us have stopped to think about what's the etymology of creature? Creature, anything that is created. Created being. To make, to bring forth, to produce, to beget a thing that is created, to grow. So yes, we are creatures of habit because we are the very impulse of the creative force itself incarnating, personified, individualizing itself. Question is, what are we creating? What are our habits creating? And it's not a question of having or not having habits. It's a question of having habits that are life-affirming and effective. Because we are going to have habits regardless, but are they moving us in a way that we desire them to? Are our habits causing us to fight like Sisyphus, pushing a boulder up a hill only for the boulder to roll back down? Are we fighting, using our habits to simply stay on the hamster wheel of life? What are our habits enabling us to do? What are we creating with them? Are we creating the life we desire and deserve? Are we creating limitation? Are we creating suffering simply because of our habits? Science of Mind textbook says, our mind must remain firm in the conviction that our life is a part of God and that the spirit is incarnating in, through, and as us. We must remain firm and convicted which brings us back to that first slide. What universal truths are we anchoring to to assist us in aligning with this conviction, aligning with and operating from this firmness of mind, this resoluteness of mind, where we are living, moving, and having our beingness, knowing who and what we are? John Waterhouse, Reverend, John Waterhouse says, the way we live our lives is our prayer. Ooh. The way we live our lives is our prayer. So if I live my life as one who avoids, I live my life as one 
who is limited. I live my life as one who reminds myself what I can't do, what I what I what I should do, but 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 then that is our prayer. Our beliefs and conceptions drive our lives. What is the belief? What is the paradigm that is moving us to have the habits? If I brush my teeth a particular way, Tracy and I were talking about this the other day. Every time I make a cup of coffee, depending on if it's fresh coffee or microwave, depending on what it 9.99% of the time, it's, it's two quick sips, right? That's the habit. It's not just, oh, I'll start drinking because I'm not trying to burn my head. Ah, my tongue fell out. I burned myself. So it's sip, sip. But why two sips? I don't know. I honestly don't. Could it be something? I watched my father do it and I wanted to emulate him. I don't know. But it's interesting that I pause and say, what habits do I have and what are they serving me? Now, that habit, is that going to make or break me, you know, getting an Oscar one day? I doubt it. Very seriously, I doubt it. But are my other habits of, you know, I have a habit of when I get depressed, I want to eat cake. Well, that habit very easily will block something that I desire in my life. So what is mine to do? Break that habit, release that habit, transcend that habit, and instill a greater, more effective habit, especially one that moves me to the point where even depression is no longer a, ha a habituated feeling, but I've moved through it and past it. The way we live our lives is our prayer. Your life is your amen. Science of Mind textbook said, infinity fills all molds and always flows into new and larger molds. Within us is the possibility of unlimited experiences. It is our privilege to give birth to them, to create them, to pray that into being. But it's difficult to do that if we are locked in and bound by non-life affirming habits. If we are locked into perceptions and interpretations that say, I'm a victim, that lock into perceptions that say, I will only ever be a victim because that's the way the world is. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer, right? That's a paradigm, that's a belief. And if I'm convicted to that, then my life is going to be lived a certain way. In other words, I am praying that into my experience. Reverend Dr. Ray Anderson says, when we are more devoted to living our lives freely and fully, more than we are devoted to living based upon someone else's ideas, paradigms, and their expectations, then we shall arise to that place of living and creating our life consciously where we embody the truth that God must be for us because it is us. So which is it? Are we going to be more convicted of the truth of what we know spirit to be in, through, and as us? Or are we going to live more so and more convicted and more devoted to living based upon the conditions of, the paradigms of lack, limitation, scarcity, Etc. It's a choice. Breathe. This week's spiritual practices, should you choose to engage them, journal, make a list of your habits and, uh, and identify if those habits are effective or ineffective in relation to your goals and things that you desire in your life. So you don't have to, you know, list every habit. As soon as I come in the house, I swish, swish, swish my feet four times on the, on the doormat. One, two, three, four. Okay, it's a habit. Taking my shoes off before I come into the house. It's a habit. What does that have to do with my goals or my life desires? It may have nothing to do with them, but that's for me to determine. It's a habit. Is it effective in moving me toward my goals or is it simply something I do because I don't want to track dirt in the house because Tracy might get mad. Tracy would get mad. She would. I've done it before, right? So the idea is make a list and then identify effective or non-effective in terms of your goals. 
Now, which habits cater to your comfort zones? What are you invited to do to create more effective habits? We have habits. How do they cater to the comfort zones? And what are we willing to do to create habits that are more effective? What universal laws or spiritual practices will you actively engage in daily this week, at least this week, that will move you from comfort zone to growth zone to the infinite zone, the zone of, I know that I am infinite possibilities expressing. I know that the one life God is living, moving, and having its being, being this in through and as me. I exist in the zone of infinity. What universal laws or practices will you engage in this week? And with three people, have a vulnerable, open conversation about some addictive habit that you have held or currently hold, right? You either one time had it or you currently have it and it's holding you back from living your best life. Now that could be a habit of thinking, it could be a habit of how you live, it could be a habit of something you do, whatever it is. What is the addictive habit that is holding you back presently or past? Do not discuss any resolutions or answers or solutions. This is simply about opening up and being vulnerable, opening up and being transparent, opening up and saying, you know, I, I have this tendency to avoid confrontation. I have this tendency to point my finger and blame. I have this tendency to judge homeless people. I have this tendency to, you know, all politicians are crooked, like whatever. It is. What is the addictive habit? Gossip. Did y'all hear what Tracy did last Saturday? Like gossip, whatever it is, what is the addictive habit? Simply sharing that with three people, nothing about solving it yet. Pause and breathe. This week's declaration, our affirmation, I will say it first and then if you so feel aligned, say it with me. Throughout every step of life, I am faith in action. Together. Throughout every step of life, I am faith in action. Breathe. I am faith in action. Breathe. And that faith in action shows up in every aspect of my life, every step of my life. Breathe. Breathe and avail ourselves to the powerful voice, the powerful presence, the powerful gift of a beautiful individual that we also recognize and know is this. The letter is faith in action, the very power of spirit, the very voice of God, the very beauty of the universe here to grace us yet again with her divine gifts and talents. Let's give it up. Thank you, Deletta. You are so welcome. There's a burning feeling in the bottom of the soul. Only your heart understands. Everybody's got a little love inside to give away. All you really need is a chance. Time is wasting, and you don't need to wait another minute to let your life take you to the limit. Shine on, oh, shine on. Open up and let your light shine on, whoa, shine on, shine on. Open up and let your light shine on. Even if you never had a moment in your life when you were freed enough to let yourself go. It's okay to take a little leap of faith of sometimes. How will you ever know? The world is waiting for you to share what you've been given. Never too late for a new beginning shine on oh shine on open up and let
let your light shine on. Yeah, shine on, shine on. Open up and let your light shine on. Yeah, open up and let your light shine on. You got to break out, break the rules. Oh, 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 break out, break through. You can do it. Break out, break through. Ooh. 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 Time is wasted. You don't have another minute. To let your dreams take you to the limit. Shine on, why don't you shine on? You got to open up and let your light shine on. Oh, shine on, you can do it. Shine on, open up and let your light shine on. Yeah, open up and let your light shine on, shine on, shine on. Uh huh. Let your light shine on. Oh, be a light of the world. You got to let it shine, 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 shine. Let your light shine. Let your light. Shine on, shine on, mm -hmm. shine on. Put your hands together once again. Let's give the letter some love. Yes, let your light shine. Thank you so very, 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 very much, the letter. Ah. So we ground and anchor into this moment of service where we recognize that we engage in the spiritual practice of offering of our treasures, our tithes, our financial donations. Why? Because we are demonstrating the right and perfect home, like the right and perfect building for CSL Greater Baltimore, where we are a spiritual community center, a spiritual hospital of sorts, a spiritual university that is here to expand and elevate consciousness in the greater Baltimore area. So that's what we're tithing, offering, and donating for, right? It's for the nuts and bolts of the business aspect, but it's also where you are spiritually fed. Here, where you are sowing seeds so that this community is able to do greater and greater things for you and for others. If you happen to be new, just let me give you a little bit of information. The Pratt Core, the practitioners of CSL Greater Baltimore have pledged, in addition to their regularly scheduled monthly tithes, an overabundance of a, an expansiveness of $25,000 by the end of this year. As of 9 8 21, that dollar amount is $12,350. The community's matching pledge of $25,000 by the end of the year, at, as of 9 6 21, is 1,325. Now you may be wondering, how do I tithe? How do I donate? How do I sow seeds into this? PayPal, text to give, or the postal mail service. You can also divide a certain portion of to emergency care, to youth and families, which we don't have right now, but we know that we will. So you can tithe into that. You can tithe into the music ministry, the interpreting ministry. You can tithe into a variety of things and divide. I want $10 to go to this. I want 10 to go to this. I want 20 to go to this. I want You can do that, just so you know. If you want more information, reach out to any of the board of trustees, or you can go to the website, cslgreaterbaltimore.com slash give. Breathe. Recognizing that the infinite power and presence of spirit itself as infinite potentiality is showing up in through and as us. So our declaration of financial wealth and abundance is actually a declaration of health and wellness, right? It's a demonstration of 
an, an abundance of joy, an abundance of intellect, an abundance of love. Ah, so if you are so aligned, if you feel comfortable and confident, then let's say it's together. Are you ready? Oh, yeah, well, there, let's, let's say I was gonna ready to mess with Tracy for a second. Let's say it together. I joyfully, consciously, and gratefully participate in the law of circulation. I trust in the spiritual principle that says, as I sow into my beloved community, I demonstrate my awareness of standing, not only in the flow, but as the flow itself. As I sow of myself, my time, my treasure, my talent, I demonstrate my support and engagement in my, in my community's vision, mission, and purpose. I actively give as a demonstration of manifesting, of reaping the harvest of a world that works for all. Breathe and recognize that that is the truth of who and what each of us is, because it is the truth of God. That is what spirit is. That is what the universe is. And what else is the universe? It is awesome. It is awesome. And if it is awesome, then you must be awesome. Tracy's shaking her head right now, but she's awesome. Even though she said one of my habits is opening my mail at the dining room table and then leaving it there. So Tracy's invitation to everyone today is to go out and be your awesome selves. Don't open your mail and leave it on the dining table, but be awesome. Ah, so quick announcement. There is no board meeting. Normally the board meeting is scheduled third Sunday of the month. There will not be one today, just so you know. So after service, our practitioner on duty today, the stellar, the magnificent and beautiful Diane Stewart Hamlin is available for one-on-one -on -one prayer. If you want prayer, type the word prayer in the chat box and Tracy will know to place you in a breakout room with her. Cool? Cool. So simply anchoring knowing that service is now coming to an end, this thing called CSL Greater Baltimore service is coming to an end, but that which we are as the infinite universe serving itself, being of service to itself goes on long after this concludes, long after the Zoom room closes. How long? Forever. Because that which spirit is, is without end. And so we ground an anchor knowing, ah, our habits are effective and life affirming. We are grounded in spiritual truth. We are grounded in the universal truths and spiritual practices that demonstrate this. And that we are moving and navigating life in ways that are empowering and authentic and compassionate, forgiving and joyful. And we are grateful for this entire thing. We are grateful for the pre-service meditation and music from Diane and Deletta. We are grateful for every aspect of the interpreters. Grateful, grateful for computer technology. Grateful, grateful for ourselves being willing to wake up this morning and log in and join in service. Grateful. So we allow this energy of infinite gratitude and love and wonder to propel us forward into greater and greater and greater expressions of the one. This is so the law receives and that which we know to be true is declared and therefore we are able to say with conviction and firmness of mind and so it is. Amen. Much love and blessings.